often appearing on lists as the worst car ever built, the AMC Gremlin was an oddly proportioned answer by the US car maker to the question of highly economic and efficient European and Japanese import models, which began to appear on American roads during the late 1960s and early 1970s. While today, the machine is condemned primarily due to its looks, the reality is that the humble Gremlin, despite its odd outward appearance, was a huge winner for AMC during the dark days of the 1973 oil crisis, helping to weather the storm of spiking fuel prices and in so doing, become one of the hottest selling cars in the USA. The Gremlin's story begins during the late 1960s, when due to a mixture of incredible fuel consumption, gigantic proportions, poor performance and planned obsolescence, Detroit's big three car makers were starting to lose out to import models produced by Japanese and European builders, and in a bid to reverse the sudden rise of Toyota, BMW and Volkswagen, each of these firms developed a model that would fight their foreign rivals on even terms, the fruits of this early drive to present more compact economic cars being the likes of the Ford Pinto and the Chevrolet Vega. Included in this desire for the creation of an economy car was the American Motors Corporation, or AMC, the smallest of Detroit's car firms, and one that had been founded in 1954 through the merger of the Nash Kelvinator Corporation and Hudson Motor Car Company, in order to stop themselves from being fully engulfed by the likes of Ford, General Motors and Chrysler, the combination of their assets being the largest corporate merger in US history at the time. By the late 1960s, AMC had made a name for itself in developing a fair mix of models across various ranges and types, including full-size sedans like the AMC Ambassador, muscle cars like the Marlin, and, through the $70 million purchase of Kaiser Motors' money-losing Jeep division, early SUVs like the Jeep Wagoneer and CJ Off-Road Utility Vehicle, a direct descendant of the Woolies Jeep of World War II. It was their position as a small car manufacturer that had truly helped to make a name for AMC among the average American buyer, with cars such as the Rambler American and the Hornet demonstrating fuel efficiency and dimensions which undercut the gigantic driveway dinosaurs of the Detroit Big Three, and thereby served an initially modest but gradually rising niche for customers who desired more for less when it came to driving. In light of the rapid drive for higher efficiency models on the US market, AMC decided that they would also tap into this sudden trend, but found that, due to the expensive development of the 1970 Hornet Compact nearing completion, and having spent $70 million on the purchase of the Jeep Mark that same year, creating a compact model that would rival the upcoming Pinto and Vega had to be done on a shoestring budget, and therefore the solution came by cutting down the Hornet from its sedan and station wagon variants into a stout design that fell into the emerging subcompact classification. Taking inspiration from the AMC AMX GT concept car of 1968, a V8-powered GT coupe that never went into mass production, AMC stylist Dick Teague was tasked with revising the AMX GT's sporty look to help the upcoming Gremlin stand out by way of its strange styling, abandoning the more conservative look of previous AMC models, and indeed subcompacts in general, by adopting a low, smooth profile with a long nose and short back, although Teague himself openly noted the car's odd aesthetics but was assured that its appeal would be based on the personality such a curiously proportioned car would represent. Mechanically, it was very simple, implementing little to no changes over the underpinnings of the Hornet off which it was based. This car itself, while illustrating a major technological advance over the Rambler American it replaced, being a comparatively humdrum vehicle. With cam in block straight six engines, four wheel drum brakes, and a three speed manual transmission that lacked a synchronized first gear. While the compacted rear suspension was simply a shortened version of the Hornet's longitudinal leaf springs, but this had a tendency to make the Gremlin's back end prone to skipping sideways while cornering. Cost cutting on the Gremlin project was the order of the day, and was primarily achieved thanks to its super stiff body shell, which resulted in a rattle free ride, complemented further by the fact that, against what its profile might suggest, the car was not a hatchback, access to the trunk area being made through a hinged back window on the four seat models while the low-end two-seat Gremlins had a fixed rear, and thus could only be accessed through the doors, the lack of a tailgate having many structural advantages, as it helped to create a steel box that was almost impossible to compromise. On a practical level, the AMC Gremlin presented among the smallest American family cars ever built, coming to within a few inches difference to the rival Volkswagen Beetle, but due to an insistence on widening the body, was able to maintain a minimum degree of functionality, and while it was indeed a heavier machine than the Beetle, 
The 3.3-litre AMC 199 inline-six engine made it quicker, its 21-gallon gas tank allowing it to travel further between fill-ups, and its tighter turning circle making it nimbler, complemented further by the car being competitively priced with its German opponent, with a listed base cost of $1,879, or $13,248 in 2021, a bargain when compared to the base model Chevy Nova at $2,335 and the $2,090 Chevy Vega. Entering sales on April Fool's Day 1970, the early complaints and controversy surrounding the car's looks were quickly swept away after AMC were able to shift 25,300 gremlins from their forecourts within the first year. While in 1971, despite competition from the recently introduced Chevy Vega and Ford Pinto, sales doubled to over 40,000 gremlins during that year alone, a massive success for the small-sized firm when considering the might of General Motors and Ford's incredible assets and financial backing. The reality is that the AMC Gremlin hit a soft spot with regard to mixing the quirky style and mindset of the early 1970s with a practical design that, in many cases, outperformed the long-established Volkswagen Beetle, answering the call of many consumer groups that lamented the ever-expanding proportions of standard American cars and helping to support the fledgling but increasingly vocal environmental movement, which decried the ostentatious fuel consumption and engine displacements of the average US automobile. The 3.3-litre AMC inline-six engine, though a thirsty and inefficient power plant by modern standards, being considered frugal in comparison to the big-block V8s of the era. Through its mixture of a larger engine and superbly tuned automatic transmission, the Gremlin was also significantly faster than its opponents, 0-60 coming in 11.3 seconds with a top speed of 105 miles an hour, while the Ford Pinto had a 0-60 time of 11.6 seconds and a top speed of 96 miles an hour, the Chevy Vega had a 0-60 time of 13.5 seconds and a top speed of 109 miles an hour, and the Volkswagen Beetle had a 0-60 time of 18.4 seconds and a top speed of 81 miles an hour. The Gremlin's finest hour was yet to come though, as on October 19, 1973, the 12 nations of the Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, placed an embargo against the sale of oil to the United States in the wake of their support for Israel during the Yom Kippur War. And with it, fuel prices soared, rations were implemented, and queues miles in length formed as drivers desperately struggled to get every last drop. In the aftermath of the oil crisis, sales for domestic American cars nosedived, and the long-maligned newcomers of Toyota and Mitsubishi, together with established brands like Volkswagen and BMW, saw a sales spike that put European and Pacific metal on the driveways of nearly every house in America the only US models able to fight back against this surging tide of foreign machines being the economy cars of Ford, Chevy and AMC. Even then, despite the stiff competition of the Pinto and the Vega, as well as the millions of dollars of support each of those models had, the Gremlin was still the overall winner, thanks firstly to the rapid collapse of the Vega during 1973 and 1974, where build quality problems and massive unreliability meant sales for the car were tailing off, followed shortly thereafter by scandalous revelations regarding the Pinto, as due to the poor location of the fuel tank, the car had quickly garnered a reputation for its woeful rear-end shunt safety record, the positioning of the fuel tank meaning, in the event of the car being struck from behind, even at low speeds, the tank would rupture and douse the car's interior in fuel, resulting in dozens of post-crash fires. The AMC Gremlin, meanwhile, as the undisputed underdog, based on simple technology and an even simpler design, was the champion of the early American economy car, sales exploding from 122,844 in 1973 to 171,128 in 1974, an incredible success for AMC, and one that helped establish the firm on the map of both the US and global car market, the Gremlin being either sold or built under license in Mexico, Australia and Great Britain. After 1975, the true effects of the economic recession caused by the fallout of the 1973 oil crisis truly began to be felt, and thus gremlin sales, together with car sales generally, cooled but remained steady throughout the rest of the decade, the car's place in pop culture notoriety being rapidly superseded by the arrival of the enlarged AMC Pacer of that year, a machine that essentially took the aesthetic of the gremlin a step further and would itself be a sales smash, but one that would ultimately doom the AMC firm due to demand severely outstripping the small company's limited facilities. This wasn't to say the Gremlin had been forgotten though. In fact, due to its small size, economic nature and simple mechanics, 
The car was used as the basis for various early attempts at introducing alternate fuels to the mass market, with the University of California, in 1972, advancing the use of hydrogen through a converted Ford 5.8-litre engine fitted to a Gremlin. Many of the lessons learned in this experiment helping to inform the future of hydrogen-powered automobiles, while other Gremlins were converted to run on non-petroleum fuels including naphtha, kerosene, ethanol and methanol. The methanol example, successfully running on this fuel type for 10 years and covering 46,250 miles. Finally came the concept of electric-powered cars, when in 1973, the Electric Fuel Propulsion Company, or EFP, of Ferndale, Michigan, created an electrically-powered Gremlin dubbed X144 and featured a 20-horsepower direct current motor fueled by a 144-volt cobalt-lead storage battery. The electric Gremlin capable of reaching a top speed of 60 miles an hour and presented a calculated lower cost per mile over 5 years and 20,000 miles against the regular petrol-powered Gremlins, while between 1973 and 1978, Inventor Cotton Waitley of Wichita Falls, Texas, offered his own range of modified electric gremlins through various dealerships, these being capable of reaching a top speed of 50 miles an hour and at a maximum range of 50 miles. Eventually, the curtain had to fall on the AMC Gremlin, and after eight years on sale, the near-decade-old car was starting to look severely out of place as more advanced subcompacts, which were lighter and presented improved practicality and performance, such as the Volkswagen Rabbit, entered the market. Thus, AMC chose to axe the Gremlin in 1978 after selling 671,475 units, the car being replaced in the lineup by the AMC Spirit, a restyled replacement which was based on the Gremlin's platform and was offered in two hatchback variations, and would remain in production until 1983. As for the Gremlin itself, despite its huge achievements, both for AMC and the American motoring market overall, the car is frequently maligned by modern reviewers as an unfortunate staple of its time, complaints being aimed not only at its odd looks, but also clumping the machine in with the more notable failures of early US subcompact models, including the Chevy Vega's build quality and reliability problems, and the Ford Pinto's propensity to catch fire in low-speed accidents. In reality, the AMC Gremlin was the very definition of cheap and cheerful, a simple low-cost machine that proved to be the right car in the right place for when the oil crisis struck. And while it didn't single-handedly stave off the flood of European and Japanese equivalents, it was, mechanically, and in terms of overall design, the most successful of its peers, and today, against the complaints of motoring reviewers, has found a home among a new generation of appreciative fans, ones who may be largely attracted by its styling, but can also understand the car's role in helping to introduce more efficient driving to the American buyer.